Hi, I'm Howard Jacob. I'm the director of the Human and Molecular Genetics Center and one of the founders of the Personalized Medicine Program here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, personalized medicine uh, and how reading your DNA plays a role in personalized medicine. So what is personalized medicine? You hear it called individualized medicine or personalized medicine. And what exactly is that? Well, it's a strategy of being able to look at your DNA and being able to read into your DNA different things like what type of a drug you should take or maybe a drug that you shouldn't take, what types of diseases you might be at risk for. And so medicine is at a point now where we have the technology to start asking these types of questions. So personalized medicine is really a change from on average taking a medicine is safe to moving towards it will be safe for you. And so the strategy at the Medical College of Wisconsin and our affiliate hospital partners uh, Freighted Health and Children's Hospital of Wisconsin is to start to use this type of information in our clinics. Well, what does that mean? What does that feel like if you were to go through something like that? So I've decided as, as part of my interest in this and my personal interest in understanding how this feels to have my own genome sequence. And so what did it take to do that? Well, it was a simple blood draw followed by removing the DNA from the white blood cells and then reading that DNA. And so with that, I had the opportunity then to ask, what's it like to actually be a patient in personalized medicine or individualized medicine program? Now, one of the big things that people ask about is, well, how does it feel? Where did you want to go with this? Who do you talk to? Because really in reading your DNA, it tells you something about your family. Now, we're all comfortable with that at many levels. Every time you go to see a new physician, you actually tell them your family history. Now, the problem with that is that most of the time we really don't know our family histories very well. So that information we're giving to try to help our physician or our clinical team uh, know something about us and what we're at risk for, the data is inaccurate. So now the strategy would be is if by reading my DNA, there'd now be the possibility for my physician to know something about me and have it be quantitative. But that has meanings for my children and it has meanings for my parents. It also has a meaning for my wife. So we had a family discussion. How would we do this? And then with the discussion being that we would like to do this, and I would personally like to do this, we then met with a genetic counselor. And that's the next piece that we went through, which was to say, okay, have we really thought about this carefully? Are we really prepared to ask some questions and to have some things answered? And I'll give you a very personal example. Uh, breast cancer runs in my family. Both my grandmother and my mother have had breast cancer. And so therefore, my girls are at potential risk. Is this something as a family we want to know? And we decided that this is something that we would like to know. And so with that, we went forth and decided to have my blood drawn and to then send it out and to get it read. It's called sequencing. So the DNA was sequenced and then the information came back. And when it came back, it came back on my iPad. And so that's kind of a big change from having your data living in some hospital office or some physician's office to now suddenly being able to carry your medical information. And so what I'd like to do is take a few minutes and show you what does it look like to have your DNA, or at least in this case, my DNA, on my iPad. So let's start by um, the summary of my genome. So here's a summary of my genome. So what was done is that the company that did this for me, Illumina, looked at um, 344 genes, as it mentions on here, or shows on here, and 141 inherited genetic conditions. And so what they did is they found that I'm carrying one bad gene for each of these three diseases, which means I'm a carrier. That means that I can pass one bad copy of these three genes. Now, I certainly have more than three genes that are defective in my genome. We just haven't had a chance to go in and look at them at this point in time. But let's just use this as an example. So the biotinidase deficiency, we know we have something. So what does that mean? Well, on my iPad, it tells me. Here's my biotinidase deficiency, and it tells me what that is. Now, for most of you, this information doesn't mean a lot. And actually, for me, it doesn't mean a lot either because I only have one bad copy. But as an illustration point, we could go in and take a look at the BTD gene, and that's what's coming up right here. And so what you can see now is down on the bottom in the white, BTD, you can now see the gene structure. And so what's important for you to understand is the part of the gene that's meaningful is the dark blue bars and the part that is carrying my mutation that's a red, which basically means I, ha I have a problem. 
So let's go in and take a look at that. How far can we go? So what we're going to do is go down and you see those purple lines. Each of those purple lines is a variation in my genome that is different from a reference genome. And in fact, those purple uh, differences are what makes me unique. And so I talked about personalized medicine. Here, in fact, is what is personal. This is unique to me. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm the only one that carries these, but in this combination, only myself and my immediately family members would carry these combinations. So let's take it down further and further, down to the level of the actual chemical base pair, which makes up DNA. And so I'm just simply expanding this down to that level. So that is, in fact, my variation. I have a G, like the reference, and I have a C that's different from the reference. Now, I got these two from my parents. I don't know which one. I don't know if I got the G from my mom or the G from my dad. We can then go in and click and ask, how often is that? Well, what we know in the 1,000 genomes that have been sequenced so far, only 2% of the 1,000 people sequenced so far carry this variation. And that's because... This is a variation that can cause a disease, and if you had two copies of this, I would have had some serious health issues. So that just gives you an example. Now, I mentioned earlier about being at risk for breast cancer. So we could type in breast cancer and find out what do I know about breast cancer. So if you take a look, there's a whole bunch of genes that come up, and here we're looking at a specific gene called BRCA2. And what's important to know is that's the whole gene that's looking there, but there's no red balls. And those red balls are what indicate a known variation that causes disease. So I feel pretty good about this. This particular gene, I don't have anything that's known to cause disease. And I'm going to emphasize that is what's known. So let's come in here and take a look. So if we come in here and take a look here, what we see is, is I do have these two variants, these two silver balls marking here that means we don't know what that does. So is that good news? Is that bad news? Well, right now the answer is we don't know what the news is, and over time we'll know what these different variants mean. For right now, we just have to look at this and say we don't know, and with time we'll know more. So you've now had a chance to see what it looks like to have my genome on my iPad. Now, I only showed you one specific example. Imagine now what the power is that's sitting inside my iPad. Now, there's the good news and the bad news about that, right? So, am I going to spend all of my time looking at my genome? Am I going to worry about this? Am I going to be concerned? And I'll tell you, for me, right now, I haven't been. And this is why it's really important to spend some time with a genetic counselor and think carefully about this. Do you really want to take a look at this information? Now, what's the value to me? Well, Really, the value today is, is minimal. There's not a lot that we know about the genome that is something we can use for as a medical purpose. Every day, research learns more and more. And the advantage of having my DNA digitalized and in a place where I can look at it is that as we get smarter and smarter about genomes, there's more and more value in this. And so if we really stop to think about this, what would the world look like if everybody's genome was available in a digital space, and we could then all, and I mean not personally, but through our healthcare providers, the ability then to look at this and then ask questions about what does it mean to be human? What does it mean? What drugs are important? What variation are important? And simply right now, there's not enough people sequenced. So think of the legacy we would leave and the true family history we would have if everybody had their genome sequenced and this became part of medical practice. Well, that future is what we're looking for, and that future is what we believe has the chance to change the practice of medicine and improve our health care. So thank you for spending a little bit of time looking at my genome. Hopefully down the road you'll have a chance to look at your genome too.